Wisdom Exchange TV. Today we're in Kigali, Rwanda. My name is Suzanne S. Stevens, Chief Edge Optimizer for the Ignite Excellence Group of Initiatives. One of our initiatives is the Ignite Excellence Foundation, which invests, develops, and inspires future leaders in emerging countries. With that goal, we produce Wisdom Exchange TV, which is a resource for African women to learn, lead, and succeed in life, business, and community. It is a forum where women and men of all disciplines will learn from the leading ladies in politics, business, education, and philanthropy. These are the women that are the change agents, the pioneers, the trailblazers, and the leaders of many. Please become a fan on Wisdom Exchange TV Facebook fan page, as well as come back regularly to the homepage of Wisdom Exchange TV, where we syndicate blogs of leading ladies. Today we're in Kigali, Rwanda with a very, very special leading lady. I think you're going to get tired just listening to the success of this woman and her humbleness at the same time. We are with a leading lady in business, multi-business owner, Zalfat Makaru Vega, founder and legal representation of Rwanda Tourism University. Rwanda Tourism University College, which is RTUC, which is an institution of higher learning that provides undergraduate programs in travel and tourism management, hotel and restaurant management, business information technology, and a number of vocational training courses. This year, in January 2012, Zulaf was honored with the Women Entrepreneur of the Year by the Rwanda Development Board. This is an initiative to recognize and reward the impeccable achievement of women entrepreneurs in the private sector. In addition, her business was recognized as the best small to medium enterprise in the tourism sector. I do have to add, this is at this point of her career. She's run five to six other businesses prior to starting a university. So it's an absolute pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you. And I'm honored to speak to a fellow entrepreneur. And thank you so much. You're welcome. <laughs> Just as a brief uh, synopsis, you went from $10 starting a restaurant, yes. walking to work a very long distance, started a restaurant, was successful. Four other companies came along and started competing, so you added um, a service area to that where you started selling a boutique. Yes. You went from boutique, then you went into some fashion, and then you went into furniture. Mm -hmm. um, you were successful in those businesses. Yeah. So why create, now you go into education. Education is a very different thing uh, yeah. than, than being an entrepreneur. What was the catalyst to starting in Rwanda a tourism university? Because I saw how the service, the customer care in Rwanda, uh, it's a very low. I travel a lot in different countries. I saw how they have in hotels and the restaurants they have a good customer care, uh, good service. And I thought, why not my country? I thought that because I want to uh, contribution of my country. To get money, I get because I I was I was business woman. I am a business woman. But after that, I thought it's better for contribution in my to develop my country. It's why I get idea to to open in a vast of tourism because in my country there isn't any any school or university of hospital and tourism. They started in two thousand six with the five students. And uh, I encourage the people come to start to learn how they can work in hotels and the restaurant because they get a quick job and uh, also how they, they can know how uh, they know customer care, good service, and they, they, and they also they create their job, like uh, to open restaurant, to open to our companies. This is not the first time you pioneered an initiative that there was nothing there. Yeah. You've done that before. Yes. What advice would you give to a woman if she sees a business opportunity? I advise the woman 
to be creative in their area, they are uh, like um, a district. They can see with the, the the opportunity they have, and they think uh, from that opportunity they create their job to start small and to be uh, to work very hard, and you can grow yeah, uh, our business. It's because it's okay to start small. Yeah. have a, a other business it's better to not to don't stop there thinking more than they, they have it's better if he, uh, example if you have a big uh, shop and you get uh, uh, many customers don't think uh, only about that show. Think another another business you can do uh, and you can uh, success. And also think about your country. How you can you can uh, be part of to grow your your to develop your country. It's not to make money only, but thinking about other other people, how you can help other people. Uh, like me, I had a business, a good business, but I thought it's better for other people. How I can help other people? It's to open school, to start, and how uh, they get idea for, it's, it's, a, it's a school of technical. How they create they are job. And they also now, I have a student, they have their own job. I'm going to quote you. That a, the universe is a place for those women and men who shall be pioneers. It is a place for those who shall experiment with cutting edge, contemporary thought and creative expression. So creativity is, is very important at yeah. university. And innovation also. Yes. Yeah. Now, in my limited experience, but experience nonetheless, in talking to educators, one of the challenges in many African schools is that not enough innovation and not enough creativity. What do you do at your school to encourage innovation and creativity? We have a center of uh, incubation center here in my university to show and to encourage the student to be creative, to change mindset. Uh, you know, in the, the people who study, they thinking about, if I finish my study, I go to ask a job. But in this university, we teach how they create their job. It's why we have an incubation center for, to, to encourage them to go to, not to go to ask a job only, to create their job, to be innovative. I encourage them, I go to tell how I started my business uh, with uh, uh, little money and uh, how I grow. Which is wonderful because I've heard many times you know, there's job seekers yeah. and there's job creators. Yes, yeah. And you're, you're encouraging not only good tourism, but also you're encouraging uh, entrepreneurship. What do you think it takes for R Rwandan youth to embrace creativity? I started in 2006. In 2007, there is uh, some group uh, graduated and they get job uh, easy, quickly, and it's a, uh, there is a sum they create their job. It's why it's a, it's a sample. It's like a sample. The mindset change, and they, now they know what the, the good one to start in the hospital and the toilets. Uh, the student who start in other universities come also after that, 
they come and they, they get short courses for one year and they, they get job uh, quickly and they create our job also. As you know, I'm very passionate about service. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we, were, we were talking about that earlier. Uh, and and I've, I've read something you've said. It said, my target is to teach and train each and every one in order to achieve a quality and professionalism, yeah. both locally and internationally. Yes. Now, what are some of the criteria or things that are important that um, you think students need to have to be professionals. When they start here, they, they learn the language, for any language, like uh, English, French, uh, Swahili, how they can uh, speak with other people, foreign people, and how they give good service, and how they give customer care. It's a uh, it's an uh, addition with our culture. You know, our culture, culture Rwandese, uh, of Rwanda, it smiled. Even if you go around, you see the people smile. We, we teach how they use the good one, the good culture, to make money and to know other language, to be uh, comfortable. Uh, in the service and the customer care. After graduate, they go to internship. In internship, they go like uh, three months to for professional, uh, prof uh, professional. And when they come, they go to um, to hotels and the restaurant and the tour companies for uh, travel tourism, and they work very well because they they get um, in internship they get more more practical practical oh, yes. 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 we have also a problem because the student if they go to for internship the people who work in the hotels they don't have the skills they don't have to guide the student they don't have it's a problem. <laughs> it's why uh, my government helped me to to send to pay uh, for the student to go in uh, Kenya, uh, Nairobi, in the, the good hotel. Kenya they have that school thirty years ago, and Rwanda we have four years. It's very different, but the Rwanda have good culture, to smile, it's to increase how they can uh, manage our culture and to put more, uh, more skills for customer care and the service. I appreciate you talking in English. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy for you talking in English, but you're doing great. So what's interesting too about what you're talking about is that the managers haven't been necessarily trained. So when they get people that have been trained through your university, they're not able to necessarily lift that person up to the level of professionalism because they haven't, they just went to that hotel and there's no experience there. So that's, it's a good strategy to, to do internships elsewhere yeah. as well. Yeah. For companies to get the best from their employees, what should they do to help increase the service from their employees? Do you have any recommendations? If you work uh, in teamwork, you work, you work very well, and your company grow, the employees be part of your project, and to know very well your project, and to work together, I can tell everyone to be social, to, to work hard, and to, uh, to work with, to work good with their team, employees, and if also the, the employees work good, say thank you. Even negative, you can uh, give
give advice, but you can uh, measure. If you see negative and there is another positive, say you you do very well this, but you can improve in this way. Mm -hmm. That is good. Uh, it's different to to see if your employees uh, do something bad and you, you forget the good one do for you, for your company. It's better to work with, to work good with your team and to work hard and to encourage them. Moving more to more about you, what do you think is the most significant impact you have made in your career to date? Oh, when I started, I started business, I saw the poverty who live with my husband and the children. And I thought it's better to start a business. I changed completely my life in a good way. <laughs> I'm rich now. <laughs> in so many ways. In so yes. many ways. And also the second one, uh, impact for my country and for other people. I'm very happy because I saw the many people have a job and they create their own job from me, from my idea. And also for, you know, in Rwanda there is genocide. We have many uh, orphans. I paid uh, uh, more than 50 uh, orphans. They haven't any anybody to help. Uh, and I pay them. They finish their study and they go to work. Even I don't know where who. But if I I go to hotels, they say, I know mommy. I am your student, you pay for me, I'm often, I'm very happy. Yeah. And also for my country, um, I contribute to encourage youth and women to be entrepreneurs. Yeah. Which is all incredible stuff. Yeah. If there was one thing you could attribute your success to, yeah. what would that be? Uh, only one. 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 <laughs> <laughs> only one. To work hard. Work hard. Yes. What's the most challenging aspect of your career? The challenge is to get money to build our campus. All project, it's a 24 million US dollar. It's a lot of money. I will show you my plan. Campus, hostel, hotel for practical, a, a student center, and culture village. All because we have a student from Congo, Burundi, Uganda, I designed culture village. I wanted to show the people our culture. And uh, also there is a, a student center. But the neighbors of the campus also they can use. In my plan, uh, I built in phases. The first one is to build a campus because there is a need. There is a need. Many uh, people want to to study in my university. The challenge is getting the money. Yes. Are you outgrowing your space here? I learned, I pay money for all this building, a lot of money to pay here. The $24 million building though, you're going to have to pay money too. What marketing are you going to do to get that money? Uh, to ask a loan here, uh, interest is very high. And now my plan is uh, to go out my country and other countries to get someone 
to be to be together to join in this project it's a big project like uh, someone come uh, can build the, that hotel and they used yeah? and or hostel but to be to uh, partner yeah your partner I, I, yes. I would help you but I don't have enough money yet. Oh. <laughs> Draw more students. Yes. Yeah. To pay for that. I want uh, my university be um, excellence in region. One thing I want to do is to get uh, some uh, foreigner who have experience, like uh, the people who work in the hospitality school and the tourism school uh, it can help me for that experience if we work together I want that because in this country we don't have a, the people who have experience and also for English mm -hmm. English people who teach the student because it's an it's a issue for a student they have a knowledge but to, to talk with mm -hmm. other people from, uh, from other countries, mm -hmm. it's an issue. Okay, so you're looking for a retired yes. person in hospitality and tourism that teaches? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You hear that everyone? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is an opportunity. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay. And what would be the most significant thing that happened to you or for you? to get you to where you are today? To start this, uh, this uh, university, everyone told me, I lost your money, but I said in my heart, I can. Why the men can? Why not women? I can. The people think, ah, she will she, 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 fail. 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 Yeah. fail. I say in my life, I don't fail to, to work hard and to stay. And also, when I live with my husband, I don't ask any anything about me. I think why I ask my husband why not give? I, I can I can give my husband no ask. Even in my country, we have two wives, yeah, like that. But when I was, uh, we have uh, two wives, I give my, uh, my competitor, I don't know. <laughs> yes, I give it, because I tell God, oh my God, you give a lot, I give other people. Every time I think no ask anybody anything. I can give, no ask. That's why I work hard. So just to make sure I'm clear, yes. um, when you're saying you give to my competitor, which yes. I think is a very interesting word to use, yes. <laughs> but your husband's other wife. Is yeah, that's what you mean, right? Yes. Okay, yes. which which is is um, an interesting <laughs> <laughs> word to use there. Yes. So I call this my edginess segment. I have barrier of my English. Mm. It's why I want to to go like U.S. or. Okay, to improve my English, my English, it's a, my value. It's why I don't go to uh, other countries for marketing, for to, to to see if I can get someone to yeah, for partnership to partnership. That is a value. I try, but it's not enough. Did you know this interview was going to be in English? Yes. Okay. Yes. So here's a great example. Uh, yeah. Even though it's a barrier, yeah. this is uncomfortable, <laughs> and you're doing it anyway. Yeah. Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. you. We thank you. Thank we you. thank you for that. Thank you. What does success mean to you? A person in the world do good things. Good 
example for others. How would you define leadership? To be leadership, you must evaluate your company, your people. You see uh, the people who work here, like they have a PhD, they have a master's, they have a, a bachelor degree. How, in my law study, how I, I, I can evaluate? Huh? That's a problem. It's why, in my plan, I want to have someone uh, be confident to help me to do that. Your education is yes. what? It's a secondary school only. Yes. No, 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 deal, no degree. Because my husband refused to go to, to my degree. I think it's important to mention that though. Yes. Because a lot of... Now I know you, you run a university. Yes. So this is where it becomes interesting. Yeah. But a lot of Africa puts so much emphasis on the degree and not that they wanted to do it all right. But not enough emphasis yes. on working and yes. desire. Yes. So sometimes you can achieve a lot without yeah. a degree. Yes. Now I know that goes against what your university is doing, but I think it's also an important message yeah. that you've achieved what you've achieved mm -hmm. by sheer will. Yeah. You must to to have leadership in your heart, in your own. And also, it's not only to to learn, to think about what you want and how you can achieve. In my vision, I know how I can manage my my staff to work like a team, to work together and uh, appreciation. Uh, yes, appreciating. Yes. And uh, also even uh, if they have a mistake, I don't tell like a strong word. No. I tell them like my sister my brother, but they understand and we work in, in a good environment. I don't have, I, I, am, I am not boss, we are same. Yes, that is good for manage the people in your company. All great leadership lessons. Yeah. <laughs> What's next for you? to build my campus, my own campus. And also after that, there is a need in uh, my country, in different districts. Because in South, the people from South to come to Kigali, it's very difficult. And uh, in my in my, my future is to expand Arat you see in different districts in my country. Excellent. Yeah. Pretend that your daughter is ten years old today. Yeah. What advice would you give to her? Advice I encourage uh, uh -huh. to be like me. <laughs> to be entrepreneurs. To think, uh, uh, to be innovative, we encourage them to be part of, to think about this project, to think about the, that is our project, it's not my project. Um, yeah. What words of wisdom would you give to African women? To work hard, to be confident and to grow, to develop, to develop our national, our world. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think
thank you for working in my language. You did a wonderful, <laughs> wonderful you. job. And it is really challenging. It's so good to meet someone who I actually experience the thing that makes the most uncomfortable, that they're actually doing it right on camera <laughs> with us. Again, my name is Susanna F. Stevens, and I co-produce Wisdom Exchange TV alongside my husband, Michael K. Ginwood. We're traveling all over Africa, interviewing women leaders from a variety of fields, and like one we interview today. If you know a woman we should interview, please email us at wisdomexchangetv.com at info at wisdomexchangetv.com and we'll research the person and see if they're a pioneer, a trailblazer, a leader of many to qualify for an interview. And lastly, please don't forget, be a fan on Facebook, Wisdom Exchange TV fan page. If you have someone we should interview there, you please, we would welcome your interview uh, suggestions. And also, go back to the home page where you'll see updates regularly of leading ladies all over Africa. And lastly, I'm going to leave you with my words of wisdom. Trust yourself first, because often when you're an entrepreneur, or an innovator, or creator, there's very few people that will trust you. So, as was said, if you have trust in yourself, confidence in yourself, it's amazing what you can conquer. Education doesn't give you the world, you do. Thanks for joining us.